Exercise 13. Begin by starting a new part file. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the front plane and offset a plane from it. The trick is, is to hold the control key, grab the thin blue line with the left mouse button and drag it backwards. You can release control and over to the left you could actually type in an explicit value, in this case 8 inches. Hit the enter key two times to apply it. Now if we want to show a plane, in this case we, we do want to see the front plane, we could right click and there's an option right here, it's a little uh, set of eyeglasses for show. Click on that, now we can see both. We're going to build a bottle here and we're going to start off by drawing and constructing one half of the bottle using a loft between these two planes. So let's go to view and turn on our origin and we'll begin by drawing on the front plane. So let's select the front plane, go to sketch and start our sketch. And in the manual there are lots of dimensions given and this exercise I'm not going to put the dimensions in. You don't have to if you don't want to. But if you want to get the bottle looking exactly like it is in the book, then use the dimensions. Otherwise, we're just be creative. So we're going to click on the line tool. And I'm going to infer to the origin and drag out a horizontal line, about four inches. And if I right click, there's an option for end chain, or you could double click and that will end the chain as well. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the spline tool. The spline tool constructs geometry using either polynomial splines or NURBS non-uniform rational B splines. So we're just going to click and add a couple points here until we connect it to the other end of the line and hit escape. And what we're doing is actually drawing the base of the bottom of the bottle. Hit rebuild up at the top when you're done. Now we've just finished drawing the base. Let's now select plane one and start a sketch on that. Now to go normal two, you could click on this little button here and there's a normal two or control eight. And now what we're gonna do is draw another smaller section, which is gonna be the top of the bottle here. Basically the same profile, just smaller. So a little offset here. We're gonna click and drag out a line. And then we're gonna to go to the spline tool and construct another line very similar to what we had before. And if I right click, I can select end spline. Okay, now a little trick if you want to try and make smoother transitions when this gets mirrored so that we don't have sharp points is we can actually draw in center lines at the base here, make them vertical, one there and one here, and go to select or hit escape, and now hold control and select the center line and the spline. And you'll see you have options such make perpendicular, make tangent, and there's even as equal curvature. In this case, we'll use make tangent to make a smooth transition between the two. And select here and there, holding control, and make tangent again with an automatic relation. And now we could hit rebuild. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go back and change this sketch. To change this sketch, you could right click on it, and there's edit sketch as an option. We'll take the center line tools again, draw a vertical line there, and a vertical line there. Now there are handles that allow you to do the same thing. Uh, if you want to try those, that's fine. I have a tendency to prefer using this method. I'll hold control and select both of these pieces of geometry, make tangent, and again, make tangent. And then rebuild. Now remember you could also adjust these. You could grab these points 
and smooth out the bottle or make it transition differently. Rebuild will exit the sketch. All right, make sure that both of those were drawn off of the origin, if I didn't mention that earlier, so they're both in alignment. Now we could go ahead and proceed with drawing the sides of the bottle. Now, if you look at your manual, you should see that one side of the bottle is pretty much just a, almost a straight shoot with a little bit of a bow in it, like a little radius, actually a huge radius. And then this one has like handles placed in it. So we'll start off on one side. We'll first select the top plane, which as you can see is the base or the middle of what this bottle is going to be. Start our sketch, take the spline tool, and connect from this corner, bow it out a little bit to this corner, and then end spline. Now if we rotate, we can see that maybe it's bowed out a little bit too much, but we could adjust that pretty easily. We could even go to a front view by hitting the space bar. We could go to front, or I'm sorry, top, and there. I think we'll actually straighten it out even a little bit more. Okay. Again, if you use the dimensions, it'll turn out exactly like the bottle that's in the training manual. Now we hit rebuild. You Remember, you have to hit rebuild after drawing the first curve. You cannot combine the curves on the same sketch. So now we must start a new sketch. Again, selecting the top plane, start a sketch, take the spline tool, and from this corner here is where we draw the little handles. And then we can have it come down and slope around to the base and then end spline. Now I'm going to go ahead and go normal 2 and I could adjust that if I'm unhappy with that curve. Maybe make these a little more subtle. If you need to add additional spline points, if you want to maybe make another grip, a simple right click a lot gives you several options, one of which is to insert spline point right there. If you want to delete a spline point, you could go ahead and click on it and hit the delete key on your keyboard. All right. The next step is to hit rebuild. We now have the topology of our model. So we could go ahead and now go to features lofted boss base. Select the loft boss base. The profiles are what we sketched on the planes, the front and the uh, plane one. So we select those profiles. Now what happens here is that we see I actually select a little too close. So what does it has a twist to it. So I'm going to deselect it and then reselect it closer to the opposite end. Now we click in the guide curves box and activate that. And we could select this guide curve back here. And we could see how it starts to adjust and adapt. And then click on this guide curve. Hit the green check mark to apply it. And now we have half of our bottle. Before we mirror this, we might want to actually hide the planes. We could right click on them and pick a little set of eyeglasses to hide them. And now we want to start adding some additional features to this. What we're going to first add are curvature continuous face blend fillets. Let me show you what that's all about. In industrial design, typically what people are, basically industrial designers are artists that work with engineers. They're the people that sculpt the shapes that you see in everyday objects like automobiles and television sets whatever it might be, or telephones. And so they're a blend of art and engineering. If you add an ordinary fillet on an edge, so what I will do here, I'll go to the fillet tool, and we'll put in a quarter inch fillet, and apply it, we could see that from here it looks pretty, pretty decent. However, there are tools for analysis of this. We could go to the top here, and we could find view, display, and there's something called curvature. As we select curvature, this gives us a visual, visual spectrum of colors that 
indicate variations in the surface or surfaces. As we can see here with the blend or the radius that we added, which is a constant 0.25, it looks a bit harsh upon the transitional rainbow of colors that are affected by the radius and transition of the top surface of the bottle, which might look okay when we don't have this on, but if people look at it under, like for example, a tube light, I don't know if anyone's ever seen that effect before, but basically there's what they call zebra striping effect, and it's a bit harsh, the transitions. There has a tendency to be like almost like a little dip between the surfaces. So that might not be worth working with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to select it and hit the delete key on the keyboard. And we'll add a curvature, curvature continuous face blend fillet. The way we do that is we go to the fillet tool first and we select face fillet. And there's two face sets. This could be base set one and this could be base set two. It really doesn't matter. Now before we're done here, there's fillet options at the bottom. Hit the little arrow and you'll find a curvature continuous option. By selecting that, what it does, instead of using a radius, a constant 0.25, it actually transitions with a spline. So it's a smoother surface. So let's hit the green check mark and watch how the blend appears. As you can see here, versus last time, with a regular radius fillet, it was very solid color. Here it's a transitional color. In other words, it's transitioning much nicer between the geometries, the surfaces. Let's add an ordinary fillet on this side just to look at the effect again. Again, you can see it's a harsh color transition versus the face blend fillet. They also have a name for that when you talk about curvature continuous. It's called G2, the G2 surface condition. G1 would be a, a condition of tangency, and G0 would be just a harsh edge without the fillet. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to put some of the art on this. We want to put a label recess and then a little bit of a design sculpted out on the top. We'll start with the label recess. The way we can do this as we can click on the top plane from the feature tree. Hold control and grab that thin blue line and offset a plane above the surface of your bottle. Hit the green check mark. Now we might actually want to turn off the curvature. To turn off curvature before we go any further, go back to the top, go to view, m display, and turn off curvature by clicking on it once again. Now we can see we have our plane Let's go ahead and select our new plane and start a sketch on it. And we'll go normal too. If you want to flip it around, you could actually hold the Alt key and the arrow keys will rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise on the keyboard. Now that we're sketching on this plane that's above the surface, let's go ahead and add the geometry. We'll use a line at the bottom. And then we'll use a spline to create the rest of the geometry. And we'll try and follow the edge that we have there. The more detail, the more that you add, the more spline points you'll need to add. And then end spline. You may want to add little fillets at the bottom. So here we can use the sketch fillet tool and we'll put 0.25 radii on the bottom corners. The next thing we're going to do is if we rotate this, we can see it's hovering above the bottle. We just go to Features and Extrude Cut. Instead of Blind, let's select Offset from Surface as an option. Select the surface that you want to offset from. Be aware that the offset might be an offset above the surface that you selected, so you might have to hit the reverse offset option to the left. And then also only have it go in about 30 thousandths, 0.03. I 
actually can maybe make that sixty thousand. And we can see a preview there. And now we'll just hit the green check mark to apply it. And now we have our label reset. Let's add some fillets in there. With filleting, we'll add point six. Uh, 0 0.06, 60 thousandths radius on the lower inside edge. Don't try and add both at the same time. Let's do the lower one first and then go back to fill it and add the second one on the top. We have a better chance of getting them both in and there it gives us a nice smooth transition. Especially this is going to undergo blow molding and we want to have any undercuts removed and this fillet does that for us. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the little cut in at the very top, a little sculpt, sculpted uh, shape out of there. What we can do for this is we actually could hide this plane too by right clicking on it, click on the set of eyeglasses, and we'll draw a line on the bottom face which is flat anyway. So we'll select the bottom face, go to sketch, click on the pencil, start our sketch, and then we'll go normal too. Again, if you want the Alt key and the arrow keys on the keyboard, you can rotate it around. Now we'll draw in with the line tool a little line. Once you draw the line in, we could hit rebuild. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top to tool insert curve and we're looking for projected. Now there's an option sketch on the sketch or sketch on the face. We want sketch on the face and we're going to select the sketch to project this is our line that we just drew and then below we have the projected faces and it's just this one face here hit the green check mark and apparently we're getting a rebuild error. I will have to check that out. Okay, after that rebuild error, apparently what we're missing is the option reverse projection. Once you select the reverse projection checkbox on the left hand side, right here, then you'll see it will actually project this edge onto the surface of our model. Hit the green check mark to apply it. Now what we can do is we can select that back face once again, start a sketch. Now we take our circle tool and close to that point, click and drag a circle out. Now remember the circle is going to be the cut because this will be a sweep. Hit the green check mark to apply and hit rebuild. Now we'll go to features the tab, find sweep cut, select the circle for the profile, and then the curve for the path. Again, select the sweep cut, select the circle, and select the curve. You should get a preview. If you don't get a preview, take a look at your geometry, especially the curve, perhaps editing the sketch to make sure that the sketch extends beyond the outside edge here. And then rebuild. In this case, we'll hit the green check mark to apply it. And now we've just sculpted out that little shape there. To add more detail to that, we could go to the fillet tool and just add some blends. Now we're ready to mirror this. To mirror this, go ahead and select the backside face, find the mirror tool, and we don't want uh, features to mirror, we want bodies to mirror. And select the body and hit the green check mark. And now you should have 
the bulk of the bottle completed. The next thing we want to do is we want to add the neck of the bottle and add a thread to it. Zoom up to the top of the bottle, select the top base, and start a sketch on it. Take the circle tool and infer to the origin somewhere near the center and drag out the neck of the bottle. Go to Features and Extrude Box. Approximately half inch high is fine. Now what we want to do is we want to add the thread to the neck. We could do this two ways. I'll show you one way in this lesson. Select the top base of the neck of the bottle. Go to Reference Geometry and select Plane. And we're going to offset a plane from the top base. So in this case, we'll go ahead and put in point 0.125 and hit reverse direction. And here we can see that the plane is just a little bit below the top surface of the neck of the bottle. This is where we want to start our thread. So that's why we're offsetting this. Now select that plane and start a sketch on it. Select the edge or the top base of the neck of the bottle once again and find convert entities. That will project a circle onto our plane that we're sketching the exact diameter of the neck, the neck of the bottle. Now we could go to Insert, Curve, Helix Spiral. When you select hel Helix Spiral you'll see a preview. In this case it's going up. We could reverse that uh, over on the left we have the ability to define it by pitch and revolution, height and revolution, height and pitch, or a spiral, which is a two-dimensional, kind of like a hot plate on an electric stove. We actually want pitch and revolution, and we could adjust the pitch, and then how many revolutions. And reverse direction, we'll flip it. You can have clockwise or counterclockwise for left hand or right handed thread, or you could even taper the helix for a pipe thread. Hit the green check mark to apply it. Now we could hide our plane. And now we have a path for a sweep. We just need to create the profile though. To create the profile, we want to create it right off of this end here. So we could select near the end, but not on it, of the curve. And now what we want to do is we want to go to Sketch and start a sketch on it. What it does automatically is it creates a plane perpendicular to the curve. And now we could sketch a profile. And so in this case, I'm going to select Normal 2, or we'll go to Front. We'll try to align ourselves to that. And now I'm going to go ahead and draw in the geometry for the thread. Be sure to dig in a little bit into the model. Don't draw this edge to the silhouette edge out in the outside edge. Because what happens is if you go ahead and you sweep that along, it's very difficult for the geometry to merge together as one because there's little gaps with the, uh, between them. And so digging it in a little bit will merge the two much easier. Now hit rebuild. And now we could go ahead, we'll go to features, sweep boss base. Select the profile and the path and hit the green check mark to apply it. It's actually not a bad idea to have added the fillets into the sketch. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit the little plus symbol to the left of the sweep in the feature tree. And the sketch 10 is the profile, and I'm going to click on Edit Sketch. And I'm going to add sketched fillets 
of 0 0.02 to those corners and then hit rebuild. If you try and add the fillet using the standard fillet tool feature, it will uh, most likely error out because it's a little complex for it. Okay, now we need to create a lead-in because you wouldn't want to put a screw a cap onto this if it would get locked up on that corner. So lead-in is done this way. You select the end face, start a sketch on it, and right away while it's still selected like that, hit convert entities. This little edge here is off of a silhouette, so it generates a spline. It's not good for our use, so we're just going to click on it and hit delete. And instead, we'll draw on our own. Take the line tool and just draw it straight across. The reason for that is we're going to go ahead and draw a center line floating out here close to the center of the bottle. And we're going to hit escape and align both of those by holding control and selecting them. And we're going to make them parallel. We could not have done that had we, uh, oh, I actually have a vertical relation, I had to delete that. We could not have done that had this been a spline. So now with that floating the distance, remember you're able to adjust this by dragging it, but now we're going to go to Features and Revolve Boss. 56 degrees has a tendency to work pretty well with this, so instead of 360, you might want to go to 56. Uh, the reason for that is if you ever shell your bottle out before the thread, which would be the most the wisest thing to do, you won't have this geometry floating out there in the center of the bottle. Otherwise, you could cut it off very easily. And we're going to hit the reverse button to see how this looks. Looks very good. And hit the green check mark to apply it. And now we have a nice lead in, smooth transition. Let's get the other side. You can see there's a plane there. Let's hide that. Right click on it and hide it. Now select this face, start a sketch, and we just repeat what we did last time. While the face is still selected, hit Convert Entities. And now we'll delete that spline by selecting it. Hit the Delete key on your keyboard. Take the center line tool floating out here, draw a center line. Make sure you don't have any relations by accident, like vertical or horizontal. Hit escape, and I'll select. Oh, I almost forgot I have to draw a line to close that gap. And now we can hold control and select them both and make sure they're parallel. And the further you move this out, the larger your lead in will be. The shorter you make it, the smaller the lead in will be. You can actually put a dimension between the two to control them easier, so you can type in explicit values if you need to. But let's go ahead and leave it at that. We'll go back to Features, Revolve Boss Base, 56 degrees, and hit the reverse switch over here on the left, and the green check mark. Again, another successful lead in. Okay, now at this point it might be rather difficult to shell this geometry. We could try it, especially with the with the um, the spiral or the, uh, the the helix on there. It's very complex geometry. It will probably fail shelling. So you might want to use this rollback bar here. That's this little blue bar down here. Grab it and drag it above those features. And now we could attempt to shell it. We go to shell. Put in 0 0.04, select the top face as the open face, and hope that it shells it. If you get an error message, understand that that's quite typical. Sometimes other work has to be done in order to get it to work. In this case, we were successful. We can now drag the rollback bar down. Notice that it put the sweep in before the geometry. As we drop these in, we now have a nice clean model. Save it as E13, and that finishes this lesson.